Thank you so much indeed, Judith and Naomi, for your ministry this evening. And we trust that indeed the Lord will bless it to the salvation of souls this evening. We want to turn now to the second chapter of the book of Acts this evening. And we're in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. And I want you to come with me, please, down to verse 16. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, and come down with me to verse 16. Now, Peter's preaching, of course. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 16, we read, But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, and the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you all, as ye yourselves also know. And him being de delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. And I we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. In 1873, the year 1873, D.L. Moody and Ira Sankey landed, upon, landed in the port of Liverpool to begin their great evangelistic mission over the British Isles. Shortly after D.L. Moody had landed in Liverpool, he went about the streets and he went about the cities meeting ordinary folk. One day he, he approached a president of a colliery uh, and spoke to him concerning the need of his soul in being saved. The president spoke, the, sorry, the president listened patiently and courteously. And after he listened to D.L. Moody explaining the way of salvation and his need of salvation, the president turned around and said, Mr. Moody, that's too cheap. Mr. Moody, that's too simple. I could never bring myself, Mr. Moody, to the point of believing of what you have just said. Too cheap. Moody answer, too simple. Yes, said the president. Surely it has got to cost more than what you're saying. Surely it has got to be more difficult as what you have explained. It cannot be that simple. D.L. Moody was amazed. And as he looked upon the president of the colliery there, he asked the man, do you see the shaft that is there? Yes. How far down does it go, Moody asked? A couple of hundred feet. Were you ever down there, he says? Oh, yes, I was. Well, how do you get down there? Well, he says, I push a button. The lift comes up. I get into the lift, push the button, and I go down. Simple as that. Well, he says, if you get down there, how do you get back up again? Well, he says, I push the button again, and the lift comes down. 
I get into the lift and push the button, and the lift takes me back out again. It's as simple as that. D.L. Moody says, well, how on earth did that get there? How, did, how was that put in place for you to do that? Well, he says the coal, the coal company paid thousands, thousands to put it there. All for me to push a button. Well, D.L. Moody says, well, that's the same with salvation. That's the very same thing. God paid the tremendous price. God paid the price to put salvation in place through the sacrifice of His Son, through the shedding of His blood, all for you to believe, for you to be saved. That's what it took. God paid a great price, and all you've got to do is believe it. Just the same way your factory paid a tremendous price to put that lift in. For all for you to do is push a button. God paid a great price just for you to believe and to be saved. Sad to say so many people tonight are like that president of whom I have been speaking about. Salvation, it's too good to be true. It's too simple to believe. It's too, it's too, it's too simple. And yet, friend, God offers it free to all who believe. Because it's too good to be true, so many people don't believe it. And because they don't believe it, they miss heaven. My friend, is that you tonight? You can't believe it because it's too simple. You can't believe it tonight because it costs you nothing. And if you can't believe it tonight, you're going to miss heaven. You're going to miss glory. You're going to miss everything. You may say to me, well, George, if it's, it's too simple, there's got to be someone wrong. There's, there's got to be a catch in it. Well, if I went out into the kingdom of mourn tonight and I told everybody, I told many people, you have to pay for your salvation they would start believing in you. If I went out into the kingdom of Mordred or into the streets of Northern Ireland and told them that they had to work for their salvation, they would start believing in you. If I told the people that they had to, had to earn for their salvation, man will start listening to you then. But because I tell them it's free, they won't listen. They won't accept it. I'll tell you something now, my dear friend. You cannot pay for your salvation. Why? Because the price has been paid. You cannot work for your salvation because the work has been done. All you've got to do tonight is believe it. All you've got to do tonight is accept it. That's tonight the simple step to salvation. I want you to turn your eyes with me this evening to my text. My text tonight is Acts chapter 2 and verse 21. Listen to what it says. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want you to get that this evening. That's the gospel. And it shall come to pass that whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want you to notice, first of all, tonight, that's the surety of the gospel. And it shall come to pass. Friend, that tells me we must not doubt it. It shall come to pass. And if God's Word says it shall come to pass, it will come to pass. It's so sad you get a man to believe anything, now only the truth. You'll get a man to believe anything. You'll get a man to swallow anything. You'll get a man to think of anything but the truth. You can't get a man to believe the truth nowadays. Tell him a wheen of lies, he'll believe every word of it. But tell him the truth, he can't accept it. 
But here's the surety of the gospel tonight, and it shall come to pass. It doesn't say, and it may come to pass, or it might come to pass, but it shall come to pass. That's the surety of the gospel. I'm telling you tonight, the gospel is sound. The gospel is solid. The gospel is concrete. It's unmovable. I'm telling you there's nothing more concrete, there's nothing more solid than the gospel message tonight. Nothing stands more sure than the gospel message. Yet many disregard it. Many can't accept it. Well, it shall come to pass. That's the surety of the gospel tonight. Do you believe the gospel's true? Now, that's the $60 million question for your heart tonight, oh, sir. Do you accept it? Do you believe it? Do you know that it's true? Well, I can tell you what this text says, and it shall come to pass. As sure as the seat you're sitting in, as sure as that roof is over your head, you count on this tonight, the gospel's true. God says in Jeremiah 1 and 12, I will hasten my word to perform it. Many laugh at it. Many scorn it. Many mock it. To the fear of their own soul, for it shall come to pass. And my dear unsafe friend, the gospel warns us tonight of judgment and death to the sinner. The gospel warns us tonight of judgment and death to come for the sinner. And that sends a shiver down my spine every time I think of it. But the gospel message, this your gospel of the message is this this evening. There is mercy and there is grace for the seeker. It shall come to pass. There's nothing more sure tonight than the gospel, and that's the surety of the gospel. It shall come to pass. Then there's the scope of the gospel because it says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Do you know whosoever means? It means you, it means me, it means everybody. In spite of who we are, what we've done. Whosoever, boys, I love that word, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. That's the scope of the gospel. The gospel message embraces everyone. It embraces nationalists. It embraces loyalists. It embraces everyone. There's nobody excluded within the embracing word, wonderful word of the gospel. Whosoever. Maybe there's a boy listening to Peter that day and says, Peter, do you know something? Do you know I was the one that spat on that his princely face? I was the one that spat upon him. Listen, is there any hope for me? Peter says, listen, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Maybe, maybe another boy puts his hand up. He says, Peter, Peter, listen to me. I'm the one that lashed his back with a scourging, and I'm the one that left his back like a plowed field. Oh, Peter, I've never slept a wink since of it. Tell me, tell me, Peter, is there hope for me? Is there hope for me, Peter? Whosoever, Peter would tell him, shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved, shall be saved. Maybe there's an old fellow and he said, Ah, but, ah, but Peter, I'm the soldier. I'm the Roman soldier that drove the nails through his hands. I'm the Roman soldier that drove the nails through his feet. Tell me, Peter, is there any hope for me? And Peter will say to him, Ah, but whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the scope of the gospel. Many, many, many years ago, many years ago, a man broke into a home in Boston to rob it. He broke into the home and was raised, raised a man who slept there, who a the family man, and he got up and he tackled him, and this man went into a rage, and he murdered every person in that house. 
The youngest person was three. He murdered five. Do you know what he murdered him over? Four dollars. That's all he left with. Four dollars. He was caught, sent to court. The judge looked upon him and says, Sir, there's no room for you in human society. The evil in your eyes is so relevant. And then the judges, whoever but you call him, came along with the, with the black handkerchief and placed it over the judge's head. And after he placed the black handkerchief over the black cloth over the judge's head, the judge looked down and says, I sentence you to death. The man in the dock showed no remorse. He was on death row for 21 years. No remorse. Until the night before he was going to be hanged. That night he cried in the prison cell like a baby. He knew he was going to face death. The next morning the ch prison chaplain came along with two guards to bring him to the hanging chamber. He said to the chaplain, I am broken, I am broken for what I've done. Is there any hope for me? Is there any hope at all? The chaplain who was carrying the Bible with him opened to Romans chapter 13 and verse 10, and he showed him, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That man who done that terrible deed, he and the chaplain got on their knees together, and he cried out, and he called out unto the Lord. And there and then he was saved. And as they walked him to the hanging gallows, as they walked him to the hanging gallows, they walked past all the prisoners. And the rest of the prisoners couldn't, couldn't believe what they were hearing. Because he kept saying to the rest, this man kept saying to the prisoners, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you know that man proved it true. In spite of the wicked, evil deed he done, he was included in the whosoever. You see, that's the scope of the gospel. But here's the simplicity of the gospel. Whosoever believe, calls on the name of the Lord. I'm telling you, friend, that's all you've got to do this evening. If you're here tonight and your sin troubles you and you have, a fear of, you have a fear of death, you have a fear of dying, you have a fear of hell, you have a fear of judgment, you have a fear of wrath, do you know how to get out of it? Call! It's as simple as that. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call. You don't need to learn catechism. You don't need to learn creeds. Call! That's the simplicity of the gospel. And it shall come to pass, no matter who you are, where you are, what you have done, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'll tell you, the dying thief could call. That's all he could do. Well, he was saved. The Philippian jailer, down on his knees, all he done was cry out, believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he was saved. That's all he done. I'll tell you, 30 years ago, coming on the 26th of this month, that's all I did. I was baptized, I was christened, but that didn't make me a Christian. That didn't save me. Because on the 26th of August, 1985, I called. And I'll tell you this, I was saved. Call. That's the simplicity of the gospel. Call in faith, call believe, and you're sealed. Friend, that's the simplicity of the gospel. That's what you must do tonight. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call. That's the simplicity. But here's the source of the gospel, because it says whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. That's the source of the gospel. That's the source of salvation this evening. The Lord. I'm telling you, friend, you needn't be calling on your church. You needn't be calling on your clergyman. You needn't be calling on your pastor. We can't save you. Nobody else can save you. Only the Lord. Remember, it's the Lord Jesus who went to the cross. 
No priest went to the cross. No reformer went to the cross. No minister went to the cross. No pastor went to the cross. But Christ went to the cross because there was no other good enough to pay the price for sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven to let us in. Friend, He's the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. There's no other substitute. There's no other way. There's no other one that can save you because the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, is the only Savior of sinners. I'm not asking you tonight to join a Baptist church. That'll do you no good. But I'm asking you tonight to call on the name of the Lord because neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. The Lord Jesus the one of whom I'm now pointing you to was the one that took your place on Calvary's cross. He's the one who bled. He's the one who died there. He's the one that they buried. He's the one that rose again from the dead. And tonight, the one I'm pointing you to, he's alive. And he's alive to save. You ask me how I know he lives. Well, I'll tell you how I know he lives, because he lives within my heart. I was in the places of the world, doing the things of the world, acting the idiot and acting the cob. I can tell you now there's nothing in the world could ever give me satisfaction as to what I have tonight. I tried the broken cisterns. I did indeed. Made a fool of myself many a night. And all the waters fled, and even as I stooped to drink, they mocked me as I wheeled. But now none but Christ can satisfy. None other name for me. There's love and there's life and there's everlasting joy. Lord Jesus, glory to God, found in thee. You see, that's the source of the gospel. And it shall come to pass. That's the surety of the gospel. That whosoever, that's the scope of the gospel, shall call. That's the simplicity of the gospel. On the name of the Lord, that's the source of the gospel. Shall be saved. That's the security of the gospel. Shall be saved. Friend, tonight, that's the simple step of salvation. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friend, I can't add nothing to it because there's nothing else to add to it. Because that's the simplicity of the gospel message tonight. But that's the security of the gospel. I love John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave, his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish. Do you know what it means to perish? It means to be lost in hell forever. I remember a boy in Derek Loan said to me, Oh, you're saved now. He says, What are you saved from? I says, I'm saved from going to hell. Why, what do you think I was saved from? And that's what that means tonight. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved from going to hell. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved from his judgment. That's it. That's it. Thank God tonight for the security of the gospel. And it shall come to pass. That's the surety. Whosoever, that's the scope, shall call. That's the simplicity. On the name of the Lord, that's the source. Shall be saved. That's the security. I'm telling you tonight, you need to get this right. This might be the simple step to salvation, but I'll tell you, it's not only the simple step, it's a single step because there's no other step for you to take, dear. There's no other way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man. No man cometh to the Father but by me. You come tonight to Christ. You call tonight before it's forever too late. You believe God's message tonight. And it shall come to pass that whosoever 
shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Believe it. Unsaved friend, accept it. But most of all, receive him as your Savior this evening. For your immortal soul's sake, believe him. Call on him. Let's pray. Let's take a moment of quietness. I can tell you, friend, I can't paint the picture any more clear. I'm only giving you what the Lord has given me. But it's up to you tonight, and I have been praying all week. And we've been praying in the prayer meeting tonight for you. That you'll take that simple step tonight. That step that not only counts for time, not only counts for death, it counts for eternity. You come and speak to us now, won't you? Don't you begin home? Come you and speak to us. Let us help you find them who seek you tonight. May you do it. Lord, tonight give deciding grace, we pray. Have mercy upon the lost. In Jesus' name. Amen. 280 in the Red Hymn Book is our closing prayer.